You consume it daily. You go through more than you probably realize. You are literally made of it. But how much do you really know about water? Join me, Lake Story Water, and my droid, H2O, as we travel in search of the science behind water and water-related concepts. This is Story of Water. There are some truly unique bodies of water on Earth. I'm not talking about clear blue waters of your typical lake or river. From boiling rivers to polka dot lakes to bleeding glaciers, these places will shatter your preconceived notions about what a body of water should look and act like. But don't let their beauty deceive you. Some of them hide deadly secrets. So let's explore some of the weird water wonders of the world. First off is the lowest place on the surface of the earth. That in of itself makes the Dead Sea unique, but there is even more to its uniqueness. The Dead Sea, located between the countries of Jordan and Israel, sits over 1400 feet below sea level and is just under 1000 feet at its deepest point. Its other claim to fame is that it is one of the Earth's saltiest lakes. Yes, it is a lake, even though it's called the Dead Sea. It is so salty because it is an endorheic lake, which means that although it is fed by the Jordan River, it has no outlet. The only way water leaves a Dead Sea is through evaporation, and since salt can't evaporate, all salt that has been there since the Mediterranean Sea inundated the area around 3.7 million years ago is still there. The salinity percentage is 34.2%, which is almost 10 times as salty as ocean water. The salt content makes the water very dense, so dense in fact that people float whether they are trying to or not because the salt water makes people so buoyant. It is so salty that the only organisms that can survive in the Dead Sea are bacteria. From floating to walking on a lake, our next lake is one where you can do just that. Pitch Lake is located on the Caribbean island of Trinidad. Although not technically a lake of 100% water, it is still unique in that it is the largest natural asphalt lake in the world. This lake rests on fault lines that allow oil from deep underground deposits to seep up to the surface. Parts of the oil then evaporate in the heat, leaving behind asphalt, which is a mix of oil, clay, and water. On an expedition in 1595, Famed explorer Sir Walter Raleigh used Pitch Lake's asphalt to caulk his ship. It is estimated that Pitch Lake contains 10 million tons of asphalt, which has been used to build roads in the United Kingdom and the United States. Water from rain accumulates in depressions on the lake, and a surprising number of fish and plants live in these pools. People can walk on the thick surface at spots, and their weight on the pitch leads to strange noises coming from below. One has to be careful though, as some soft spots actually act like quicksand. This next lake you wouldn't want to try to walk or float on, and its name should tell you why. Boiling Lake, on the Caribbean island of Dominica, is a fumarole, or opening in Earth's crust through which steam and gas are released, in a volcanic crater. Here, the steam and gas are so hot that it heats the water to the boiling point. Yes, the water in the middle of the lake is actually boiling, which means that no one knows how deep this lake is. Swimming is not advised, obviously, and even just being in the proximity of the lake can be dangerous, as people have died from poisonous gas emitted from the lake. How about a river that boils? In the dense jungles of the Peruvian Amazon, there flows just such a river. The Boiling River, or Chane Tempishka, varies in its temperature as it flows four miles through the jungle from a mere 120 degrees to almost 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So although it doesn't actually boil, it comes close, with an average temperature of 187 degrees Fahrenheit. This is hot enough to kill any animal that would fall in, and to give a person third degree burns almost instantly. It also makes the mud along the riverbank too hot to walk on. It is believed that the heat comes from hot springs that emanate from deep below the Earth's surface here. Here's a lake that is dangerous not because of how hot it is, but because of what lurks underneath it. Lake Nios in Cameroon sits atop a pocket of magma in an old volcanic crater. The magma releases carbon dioxide, which eventually makes its way into the water. Since the lake doesn't have an inlet or outlet, the water is very still. 
This allows the carbon dioxide to build up in the water instead of being released slowly at the surface and basically turns the lake water into carbonic acid. If an event such as an earthquake or landslide occurs to disturb the water, large amounts of carbon dioxide can be released into the air. Think of this like shaking up a bottle of soda. This is what occurred on August 21st, 1986. Up to 300,000 tons of carbon dioxide was released suddenly, and this cloud of carbon dioxide rushed down the valley, knocking down trees and suffocating 1,746 people and 3,500 livestock in a matter of minutes. So much gas was released that the lake level actually dropped by three feet. Since then, degassing pipes have been installed to pump carbon dioxide from the bottom of the lake. Imagine if nature created a staircase made of water. Well, something close to this does exist, and it's known as Pamukkale, meaning cotton castle in Turkey. White as snow travertine terraces that go up 525 feet were created as sedimentary rock deposited by mineral water erupted from hot springs. The calcium carbonate within the water eventually crystallized into travertine. Water then pools in the travertines to create these step-looking features. Each step looks like an infinity pool with barely a visible border to contain the water. Making it even more striking is the contrast of the turquoise blue water against the white travertine. Adding to the wonder are the ruins of the ancient city of Hierapolis, located at the top of Pamukkale. In nature, many organisms are spotted, but can a lake have spots? The answer is yes, and the aptly named Spotted Lake in British Columbia, Canada is one. Half of the year, this looks like a normal lake, but starting when the weather warms in summer, some of the water evaporates. This leaves behind hundreds of smaller pools that give the lake a polka dot pattern. The lake has a high concentration of minerals, such as salt, that collect in the water. When the water evaporates, these minerals are left behind as the spots seen in the lake. The spots can also vary in color depending on the type and amount of mineral concentration. Speaking of varying in color, many of our next places look something other than the normal blue color we associate with water. Some get their color from minerals, others from animals living in it. Some are just one color, others are many. Let's learn about some of the most colorful bodies of water on Earth. On an island off the southern coast of Australia lies a lake as pink as bubblegum. Lake Hillier is a salt lake that contains red algae known as Dunaliella salina and pink bacteria known as halobacteria, which are responsible for the pink color. These microorganisms thrive in salty environments and help to keep the water pink year round. Even water removed from the lake maintains its pink color. The Beppu Hells in Japan are seven hot springs with varying colors. Boiling bubbles of mud emerge from one. One pond is white like milk. Another pond is red like blood. Visitors can even drink from one of these springs. Now in Antarctica, there is a glacier that actually looks like it is bleeding. Blood Falls flows from Taylor Glacier, but it really isn't blood, of course. It is iron oxide containing salt water from a small body of water trapped below the ice that flows out through a fissure in the glacier. The iron oxide is what makes the water red and looks like blood against the glacier's white surface. Laguna Colorada in Bolivia is a shallow salt lake whose red color comes from red sediments and red algae. The lake is only three feet deep and is home to many flamingos. The flamingos are naturally white, but because of the plankton they eat and the algae they encounter in the water, they actually look pink instead. Another red lake is also noteworthy because it is one of the most alkaline or basic bodies of water on Earth. Lake Natron in Tanzania appears red in its deepest parts and orange in more shallow parts thanks to a red pigment found in cyanobacteria that live in the lake. Just one species of fish, algae, and flamingos live in or on the lake, and this is more in the peripheral wetlands and marshes. This is because the waters are extremely alkaline. The water's pH, or measure of how acidic or basic something is, has been measured at 10.5, which is nearly as high as ammonia. 
That's so caustic that it would burn your skin. So swimming is not something people do here. The Rio Tinto in Spain is a red and orange river. Its color comes from dissolved iron in the water from years of mining. This 62 mile long river is also highly acidic. So the only organisms that live in its waters are bacteria. Like the Rio Tinto, acidic waters make for some of the most colorful places. The most acidic water on earth can be found in Ethiopia. The Dalal hydrothermal system in the Danakil depression contains water with an average pH of 0.2. For comparison, hydrochloric acid has a pH of zero. Touching this would cause severe chemical burns. Heat from magma below heats pooling water up to boiling. The acidity combined with heat and natural salts create a rainbow of different colored pools. Very hot and very acidic water with sulfur and salts look yellow. Cooler pools appear green. Amazingly, scientists have actually found bacteria living in some of these pools, which means the most acidic water on earth can still support life. Another hot rainbow body of water is the Grand Prismatic Spring in Yellowstone National Park. With a temperature around 160 degrees Fahrenheit, the water here is blue in the center, but moving towards shore, it becomes green, then yellow, then orange. The different colors are due to different species of thermophile or heat loving bacteria that live in different temperatures of the water. Don't try to get too close, however, because since 1895, 22 people have died after falling into acidic hot springs in Yellowstone. One of the most colorful rivers in the world is the Cano Cristales River in Colombia. The 62 mile long river appears red, yellow, green, blue, and black in certain areas. The color comes from aquatic plants such as moss and Macarinia clavigera in the river combined with the right water level that occurs between the wet and dry season, September through November. So although the water itself isn't changing color, the effect of an extremely clear river and the colors on the riverbed make for a dramatic spectacle. Our last unique body of water is one that humans have never seen. Lake Vostok is at the South Pole in Antarctica. But isn't Antarctica covered by ice? Yes, Lake Vostok is a subglacial lake, meaning it lies below the ice. Specifically, about two miles below the ice. Below the Antarctic ice exists some 400 subglacial lakes, but Lake Vostok is the largest. It is comparable to Lake Ontario. The lake's temperature is 27 degrees Fahrenheit, and it has kept that temperature by geothermal heat from the Earth. Now, although that is below freezing, it is still in the liquid state because the extreme pressure from the weight of the ice above it keeps it from freezing. In the 1990s, scientists drilled down to the lake and found microbes in the frozen ice water from the lake's surface. More recently, in 2013, researchers published their findings of fungi, archaea, and bacteria from drilling samples. As we've described these bold bodies of water, you have probably tried to imagine what they look like. You are probably curious how the picture in your head compares to the real thing. Well, head over to our website, story-of-water.com, and check out the blog post with photos of each of the places in this story. If you have been to any of these places and want to share your experience, feel free to leave a message on our Anchor site, anchor.fm slash storyofwater. As always, thanks for listening. Lake Storywater here. Are you interested in starting a podcast but don't know where to start? Well, I was in your boat too when I came to Anchor.fm. Anchor has many tools to help you start a podcast. They help record and edit your podcast, they distribute your podcast, and they provide some opportunities to make money as well. And the best part is it's free. So try it today. Download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor.fm to get started. Thanks for joining us on Story of Water. If you liked what you heard, why not subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast provider? Let your friends and family know about it as well. 
connect with us and listen directly at www.story-of-water.com. Check out the blog or email us feedback. If you really enjoyed the show, become a Patreon supporter. Just click the donate button on our website. Remember, stay hydrated. See you next time on Story of Water.